Hi, this is Dan Blurry, retired electronics engineer, sitting out here at the front deck of my houseboat again. Um, and I got my heater running, sorry about the little hiss that's going on. It's a Sunday and I generally don't make videos on Sundays because, not because I'm religious, but because um, there's usually boat traffic and stuff on Sundays, but it's nearly December so I don't expect I'm going to see much boat traffic. Um, or car traffic on the road until church starts up. Um, I want to remind you about op amps. You know, I have like 350,000 views on my op amp video, so I thought I'd mention op amps to see if I could get my view count up because YouTube is still holding my view count down for, for some reason. Um, and again, I appreciate every view. I really appreciate you watching my videos. So I want to talk about op amps and an interesting problem I ran across when uh, I was doing a government, uh, some work for government. I won't tell you which government because um, when I joined uh, Tektronix, they went and looked at this video of, a, they were doing a background check on me. And they looked at this video of a submarine in the Columbia River and it was totally innocent. I just happened to be cruising up the Columbia River and I saw this submarine in the river and I thought, that's weird, so I grabbed my camera and got a video of it. Turned out it was a secret military project. Not that secret, because it was a high-speed boat that was also a submarine. And so they would roar by, and all the fishermen on the river would see them. But then they would go and submerge, and that's the submarine. And so I actually got a phone call from the FBI saying, what do you know about the submarine? I'm like, I don't know anything about it. I, all I know is, you know, I'm keeping my eyes open. I'm a good patriot. I'm trying to keep my eyes open in case somebody does a terrorist attack. And I saw the submarine. I thought, that's weird. So I can't tell you which government it was that this uh, example on op-amps came from. But uh, uh, if the FBI comes after me, you'll know who it was. Because I worked for, remember, I worked for the Ministry of Aerospace doing uh, all kinds. I had like 23 devices I had to do for the Ministry of Aerospace. And one of them was an op amp. And, and I did that. And a uh, comparator and some other things and um, all kinds of stuff. Frequency to voltage to frequency converter, all kinds of things. But I also worked for the U.S. military as a contractor working on electronics parts for them too, so I won't tell you who it was that would do this. Now, in my op-amp video, I tell you that no current ever flows into the input of an op-amp. And that's mostly true. Um, I've seen uh, uh, articles where they talk about you might get a femto-amp, which they say is like an electron every microsecond or so. That's not a lot of current. But um, there is some current, okay? And so, but in the, uh, in the op amp video, I'm trying to get you to ignore, you know, an unknown input. And on op amps, generally, unless you're dealing with like 10 meg ohms, generally you can ignore the inputs as a sink for current. So current is not going to flow into or out of the input of an op amp, period. It's not going to happen unless you're you know, looking for it. Now, when you're trying to test them, and I've written uh, test programs for op amps, for a lot of op amps, for SIG Core, for MOA, for the U.S. military, all kinds of things. And um, uh, it's a real problem sometimes looking at testing op amps because the input of the op amp, like I said, has a very low input current. But um, sometime, way back, way back when, when the op amps were first coming out, somebody came up with, with what was called the op amp servo loop. And the op amp servo loop allowed you to test op amps. You could test gain, um, <clears throat> AC gain, DC gain. You could test input current. You could test all kinds of things. Um, and on the op amp servo loop, there were a couple resistors, and here's a picture, um, R6 and R7 
and switch S1 and S2. Now, switch 1 and switch S2 are allowed, are used to overcome those resistors, to get around those resistors, but those resistors, R6 and R7, are relatively high in value so that you can measure the current flow indirectly because when you open one of those relays then the current flow will cause a voltage drop and that will cause a change in the output voltage and that will be detected by the servo loop and so that's how you do it. Now the military contractor that I was working with they had this op, this op amp test and They've been using it for quite a while. They were trying to do it uh, as a part of a, it was part of a bigger device. So it was just an input to an op amp, and the op amp was internal in the device. They were trying to measure the input current, and so they used something entirely different. They used, and I had to kind of draw something here, but they used a, um, current meter and they ha had a relay to disconnect each input one at a time and uh, they did that while it was in a negative feedback configuration basically it was a follower configuration so um, on the output of the op amp in the follower configuration they had a VI now if you're not familiar with VI's VI can force voltage or force current and it can measure current or voltage and generally on a VI, they have voltage clamps and current clamps. So you can, they're programmable. So you can program a voltage clamp or current clamp to prevent the op amp from going to a voltage or a current that you don't want it to. And in this case, they had, I think it was a 200 milliamp current limit on the output of the op amp. Now, it's hunting season, you can tell. And the, uh, those are sandhill cranes trilling in the background. They're not uh, tribbles. Um, so these uh, op amp circuits, these servo loops, were used to test uh, current on the op amp inputs, but these guys didn't do that. They tested it with this goofball circuit. So what they would do in this test is they would take the part and they would test it and then they'd ship it off and get it immersed in water and heated and cooled and put into a freezer and then they'd take it back out and I'd try to test it again to see if it behaved the same way because they wanted to make sure that temperature, you know, like if they take this, you know, missile into space, it wouldn't get super cold and then suddenly stop working. So they wanted to make sure or if it was a fighter jet, you know. I want to make sure that when it gets up into 30,000, 40,000 feet, it doesn't have problems with temperature, humidity, any of that stuff. So they test it and they set it off and they bring it back and they test it again and it had failures and on this op amp. And the failure was this 200 milliamp current limit, current clamp was activating. And they thought, uh-oh, that's really bad. So they went looking for it. And they did all kinds of stuff. They ground the top of the chip off of it and looked into it. They, using a microscope, they were trying, they spent months and months and months. And, you know, I offered my services when they first started. And they ignored me because I had tested off amps. But they ignored me. So um, eventually, they asked me to look at it, and so I took a look at it. What was going on was so ridiculous. In the test program, they were disconnecting the positive input. The, the op amp was in a negative feedback configuration. It was a follower configuration. They disconnected the positive input. That's not horrific. And they connected it to an ammeter, and they measured the current on the positive input. And that would come up at some relatively low value. But uh, it didn't really cause any problems anywhere else. But then they reconnected that and they disconnected the negative input. Now when you disconnect the negative input, your follower configuration goes out the door. And it goes just like um, the third test in my uh, op amp video so that 
and the op amp has an open negative input and so the output goes to whatever and that output would go to maximum full scale rail one side or the other and in some cases that was one rail which was okay but in the other case you go the other rail and that would go to uh, cause a 200 milliamp current which exceeded the clamp and the clamp would be activated. So for some reason they thought that the clamp being activated meant that there was a big, 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 big problem with the op amp that they had to figure out and they had to look at with a microscope after grinding the top off. But remember that op amps have a gain in the tens of millions. And so when you disconnect that negative input, it's going to float and it's going to float to some place. You don't know where it's going to go. And just in that short time when it's disconnected from the relay and disconnected from its output, it's going to float to some really high voltage and that causes it to leak like crazy and multiplied by 10 million, boom, you get a 200 milliamp current limit. So these guys they didn't have a clue what was going on. They worked on it for years and then they came and talked to me. I had it figured out in two days and uh, they were astonished. They were astonished because they've been working on it for a long time. Um, but uh, these guys, Chinese or American military contractors, they're stupid as hell. They're stupid as hell. So. You know, let them go to war, it's like watching kids with sticks beat each other up, you know. They don't know what they're doing. And uh, the private sector, I swear to God, the private sector, they know what they're doing. Um, uh, as I mentioned on other videos, I follow, follow Tony Heller on YouTube. Well, he's not on YouTube anymore because they threw him off. But... He worked on the MC, I'm sorry, on the PowerPC 604 microprocessor, and they called him Motorola and Intel and Apple gave him an award because he was the debug god Tony Heller because he knew what he was doing. And the private sector, they know what they're doing because they know their profit depends on having a result. The public sector, the military contractors and stuff, they don't have a clue, and they don't really want to have a clue. In fact, I was laid off from the uh, from Tektronix because I came up with a solution for testing a device that should have been easy, and I told them it would take me not much time at all to figure it out. They laid me off because they couldn't have that. They couldn't have a problem solved right away. Military contractors, forget it. Elon Musk. He is winning the space race because he is a private guy. He knows how to solve problems. But the, the uh, Boeing and those guys, Starliner is still on the ground. They still haven't figured out what's going on with the valves. And they're still not going to launch that thing. They're launching humans into space with SpaceX all the time. And uh, Boeing's still fucking around because they're using military contractors people who are used to working with the military so they don't have a clue what they're talking about. So whether it be U.S. or Chinese, those guys are fucking stupid. They don't know what they're doing. So hopefully that was helpful for you. And uh, um, op amps are a big thing. They're not that important to me right now. Harmonics is really my thing. But op amps, they're probably important to you. So. I th hope this was helpful. Anyway, from the river, this is Dan Bullard. See you later.